And we are rolling on September 14th on part two of our persuasive speeches on the last day of class on summer session C, where the sunshine is trying to shine and our thoughts and prayers with those in Florida and Texas. And Kathy Crossman is going to try to persuade us now. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Hi Kathy. <laughs> um, in January 2014, a few days after Christmas, I met my best friend. She was loving, warm, tiny, and only 11 weeks old, but ready to conquer the world with me. Today, I want to persuade you to adopt and not shop. I will give you two reasons and actions and benefits that will come if you adopt my proposal. Unless at UCLA you're studying to be a vet, a surgeon, a doctor, the chances of you literally being able to save a life are so slim. But if you adopt and not shop, you will be saving a life. And not only will you be saving a life of a cat or a dog, you will be saving a life of another animal that can come into the shelter and take that animal's place. So the first reason I'm wanting to adopt and not shop is because you will be saving a life. According to HumaneSociety.org, um, about 2.7 million cats and dogs are killed every year in shelters because there's simply not enough space in the shelters and there's not enough people coming in and adopting these animals. P animals that are sick because they don't receive medical attention and have simply been there too long are being euthanized because there's nowhere for them to go and other animals need to come in. Um, and according to DogRescuers.com, if you combined every LA shelter, around 200 dogs are euthanized every day. That's a lot of dogs that are existing in our shelters and are being killed because no one can adopt them. This makes me feel really useless and upset because I'm an animal lover, so these statistics literally break my heart. And as a single person, I can't adopt all of the cats and dogs. So I hope to persuade you to go into a shelter and take home a pet. The second reason I want to adopt and not shop is to put an end to puppy mills. Yeah, puppy yeah, mills. Mill. Um, for those who don't know, puppy mill is a dog facilitation that is ran to receive more profit than to take care of the animals. The animals live in unsanitary conditions and they don't receive proper medical care. Most of the dogs and cats will live their whole life in cages and never receive interaction with other animals or with humans or understand what it's like to go on a walk and see the sunlight. Furthermore, after the animal can have any more babies, it will simply be discarded as if it was a piece of trash. It will just be killed or just abandoned on the street as if it literally did nothing its whole life and it has no purpose on this world. This really disheartens me because I don't understand how someone can treat animals like that and also these animals all they want to do is love you and care for you so to be able to just treat animals like this and just discard them as if they are nothing is truly heartbreaking. It makes me lose hope in humanity every time I hear one of these stories about a puppy mill. Now I want to share with you some concrete actions you can take to adopt my proposal. The first action you can take is if you are considering bringing a cat or dog into your home, go into a shelter, look at all of these animals that are in these cages every day, and just look into their faces and see how happy you can make them within a matter of minutes to bring them into your home. The second action I ask you to take is to buy cruelty-free household products and cosmetics. Every time you buy one of these cosmetics or household products that aren't cruelty-free, you're giving the people money and you're saying that it's okay what they're doing. And the final action I ask you to take is to volunteer to shelter. On a Saturday or Sunday morning, just volunteer an hour or two of your time just to interact with these animals who don't get animal interaction throughout their day and don't get human interaction. And I truly feel that after you do all of these actions, you will want to adopt, not shop. You will look at these animals and realize that they just need a home, they just need some love, they just need a second chance at life that you can give them. In summary, 
I have given you two reasons and actions and benefits that will occur if you adopt my proposal. There should be no doubt in this room that I believe you should adopt and not shop. In January 2014, I met a best friend, Mackenzie. My dad adopted her from the West LA shelter, and she'd only been there for a week, so we think that she might have been a Christmas present that was unwanted. So she was only 11 weeks. She was tiny, but she was ready to take on the world with me. I cannot explain to you what the feeling is like is after going home after a long day or coming back from university and just having this thing that just has so much love for you. Thank you. Thank you. Time. 750? 450. Yeah, okay. And uh, what did you like? Hi, Hi Lee. Lee. Thank you, Lee. An improvement? Hi, I'm Korkai. Hi, Hi Korkai. Um, I think when you said adopt and not shop, it was um, kind of confusing what you were talking about because you never really stated animals in the um, first part. I mean, it was um, easy to tell, but you should still like say that you're talking about animals in like, your intro and thesis. Okay. Also, um, a bit of information, I do believe that California is in the process of banning puppy mills right now. <laughs> okay, well, that's interesting information. Um, yeah. Uh, well, okay. Let's talk about your speech, Kathy. Um, you chose to give a personal story that you um, used about your... Uh, best friend and your favorite Christmas present and you try to create a little uh, tension or suspense by not saying what it was and yet some of the audience uh, criticized you for saying adopt not chop because it was a little unclear what you were talking about so um, maybe that's true I don't know I, I got it it's a but common saying so that's why I said I don't know yeah I don't know either on the um, thesis, it was fine. Sig's statement was, unless you're going to be a doctor, blah, 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 blah. Then we finally found out you're talking about cats and dogs in your significant statement. So it became clear then, so that was fine. On your main body, your first piece of evidence, and I want you to work on you know, more stress on keywords and more vocal variety and that means yellowing and having keywords so you say you can say 2.7 million cats and dogs are killed every year and I like the way your rhetoric that you, you didn't choose the the nice word euthanize you know that's such a sweet word it, does, it sounds like almost like you're tenderizing some meat or something, you know, whereas it really means killed. Um, yeah. And uh, so stress your statistics a little better, uh, but you did have your statistics. And I very much want to point out to all of you that Kathy also had that second segment where she said how she felt about the statistics in her speech after each one of her reasons. And I think that helped connect you with your audience and gave it a good uh, uh, a connection. On your second reason, you um, indicted puppy mills and chose to define them and basically, you know, they come from, you know, people who buy online and pet stores and that sort of thing. And um, you didn't mince words there and you... Uh, uh, described in pretty pretty good detail what happens at these puppy mills. Um, I um, wouldn't have hurt to have another citation here, but you had to, so you did the assignment. <laughs> uh, how you felt about the uh, 
the public mills, you felt disheartened and lost hope in humanity. I think that was good. On your concrete actions, I thought they were all doable for people and consistent with what you were proposing, especially an hour a week doesn't seem like a big commitment and probably would change a lot of people's minds about this issue. Uh, I do, though, feel that you didn't really do a good job of benefits. Um, yeah, it was a little after I realized that the benefits was that part, I realized that. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah that you didn't really list the benefits yeah. to the audience. Mm -hmm. So I took some points off for that, but other than that, your summary, your conclusion, and your tie back to McKinsey was very touching and very uh, great way to end. It was very, you know, you really brought the emotional connection home and ended on a strong emotional note. Your canais make better eye contact. Speak in different tones. Speak slower and louder. How to go? Uh -huh. And I think my contact was a little better, but yeah. it can still be improved. Yeah. Um, I'll say this again. I, if I haven't said it to you, I've said it to others. That if you yellow and you practice with a live person, not in the mirror, and you tell this person, I want to emphasize key words. Mm -hmm. I want to develop an emphatic style of delivery. Help me. They will. And they'll help you. And just work on that, that alone as, as something you want to work at as a stylistic characteristic because it will pay real dividends because you have a real tendency to keep it the same. Yeah. And that's going to hurt you in credibility even though you have a well-researched and documented paper. But you know, if it's not delivered in a passionate manner and a compelling manner, it's going to lose a little credibility as we learn from the studies and credibility in our text. Okay, thank you, Kathy. Okay, next. Hi, how you doing? You need the old green meanie, huh? Okay, mm -hmm. she shakes out the tension, good, okay, rock and roll, Faye. Hi everybody, I'm Faye. Hi, Hi. Faye. How to use the Chicago format in my paper, and which bus should I take to Santa Monica, and when time the John Wood Sports Center will be closed today? Uh, when you heard some seemingly very simple question, would you like to answer? Or if you don't know, would you like to ask others? Today I want to share. Uh, today I want to persuade you to share information. I will present two reasons and uh, some actions and benefits with following uh, if you adopt my proposal. Uh, the first reason that I want you to share information is you will get more info. Uh, the support of this is my own story in my college. Every end of the semester, many students asked me to uh, borrow my notes uh, to review about the exam and to have a, so as to have a, a, great, uh, to a good grade. And uh, actually, I, I, I think if I don't share it, and maybe I want to get, uh, maybe I can get an A uh, grade and then get the scholarship. But after I think about that, I still send all of the information about the exam and then uh, share it with all of the classmates. You know, as a result, there is someone else also share their notes and even uh, supplemented and uh, corrected my notes. That's something maybe I missed or I did wrong. And uh, finally, all of our classmates passed the exam together. I felt very happy about this. Uh, because not only I got more information, but also my classmates like me more. Even in the um, election of the monitor, I got the highest uh, numbers of votes. 
the second reason about and I want to use to share information is uh, you will have a great sense of accomplishment. Uh, the support of this is in 2015, I, I shared a travel, uh, travel guide about to go to uh, the Great War in, in my Weibo, just uh, simply like Facebook. And there are thousands of people views and uh, I, I received some comments that uh, thanks to me. And uh, I feel very valuable about this because I used to get information from the, uh, from the uh, internet, but this time I can help, I can help others. Uh, third, I want to uh, share you some actions and benefits uh, uh, that you might to take. Uh, uh, some actions you might to take. Uh, first is you can share your uh, information about your profession or your good at or your some uh, common sense in your Twitter or Facebook. Uh, even if you like or if you know, you can answer others' questions such as why did my girlfriend broke up with me. Secondly, um, I, you uh, when you see some information related to your friends. Uh, you can share to him or her in time, such as uh, uh, I have. Uh, if uh, if my friend uh, like he, if my friend like running, and I browse through some uh, marathon race in my phone, I can share to her. Third, uh, certainly, um, you can talk to others about what you're interested in, and you will get more information from others in different views. And after you performed this, I guess you will be enjoying that and you will got more and more information and more popular. And in summary, I have shown you uh, two reasons uh, about uh, share, uh, three reasons about uh, sharing information and uh, some actions and benefits uh, with that if you adopt my proposal. Uh, there's no doubt in this room that you should believe you will be more happier if you uh, share the information. And uh, uh, there, in this side, life is full of knowledge and I, I'm sure you will uh, be more knowledgeable. Um, in the end, thanks uh, for Lorena, <laughs> Lorena and Lisa letting me know how to use the Chicago format. And uh, my friend told me to take the big blue bus to Santa Monica. And uh, I know that, the, that uh, today uh, John Wooden's Sports Center will be closed at 11.45 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks all of you give me the advice on my speech. And thanks <coughs> you to sharing your information. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You forgot the significant statement. You already knew what you forgot. Very good. Okay. What did you like? 446. 446? Hi, my name is Lizbeth. Hi, Lizbeth. I really like the way you tied back to your the beginning of your intro. I find it pretty like funny and I like your speech. Yeah, and she did a creative thing with it, didn't she? Because she, l it was just a series of rhetorical questions that seemed kind of boring in the beginning, yeah. but then she got, she thanked the people for the answers that they gave her, which made it rather endearing at the end. Mm -hmm. Improvement. Um, um, hi, my name is Lizbeth. Um, I really like the way you came back to your, the beginning of your intro. I find it pretty, like, funny and I like your speech. Hi, Linda. Um, I like your speech. I did notice that you forgot the significant statement, so um, you probably have one written down, but I think um, that would be good to read, obviously. Um, and I liked your stories. Um, I thought they um, like backed up your um, thesis statement well. Um, I'm trying to think. I think maybe I would have liked um, a more clear like uh, benefit of like what yeah. happened. Um, after you like shared your information um, and stuff like that, especially after your second story, um, maybe if someone like saw what you would like post on the internet and like benefited from that, that would have been good to share a little about it. Yeah, that's that's a I was a point I was gonna make, Linda, but thank you for making it. So can can I? Can, can you respond? Is, sure. Yeah. Can I um, speak my significant? Sure, yeah, why not? Uh, Better late than never. I think it's still important 
because and we know, we always know the internet is so advanced that maybe no need to ask other questions. Just Google is so easy, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, have we? Uh, but uh, have we thought about that? Who is answering in the on the internet? If there's nobody sharing information or updating the answers on the internet, what should we do? So I think uh, sharing information is everybody's business. That's my <laughs> significant thing. Good. Okay. Good. That was a good significant statement. A little light, but it was good. Okay. Uh, Faye, let me give you some feedback. I thought you made good improvement over the quarter. Uh, relax your hands. Let them be by your side confidently. Um, I like your your rhetorical questions because they made allusions to things that were uh, uh, concerned the class, the Chicago format, the how to get to the beach in Santa Monica, the wooden sports center, where to work out. You know, yeah. so these are things that were on people's minds and questions people had. So that was good. The thesis statement was fine. You skipped the significant statement, but the one you finally gave was okay. On your main body, you gave a sort of an interesting mm, rationale for um, sharing the information, and it's it, and I, I liked it, and I liked the um, the sort of the communal and the uh, the kindness that goes behind this. That you said, you know, I thought, well, I could be a jerk and not share and get a higher grade and let them all fall by the wayside. But then I thought, well, maybe I missed something. Because they have something to do, so I'll sometimes miss the class. And then maybe I could get some benefit too, so then you decided to share. And then everyone made it. I will tell you that. Mm, if you ever go to law school, I don't know what your plans are, but it can get real competitive there, and people often don't share their briefs or their notes with people just because they want to, you know, get a higher position in the class ranking so they can get a better job and have a longer Ferrari. Anyway, um... I remark cynically, but in any case, I like the communal and the the uh, values behind your thought process there. And I thought your example, although it wasn't from a journal or a book, it was a personal example, and it was compelling. Yeah. Your second reason. You and this is sort of goes to Linda's point a little bit. Was you said you shared a travel guide to the Great Wall of China on Facebook, and there were thousands of views, and some people thanked you for the information that you shared. So. Uh, I think what Linda was after was more examples of where you had shared and you had and more, and more you had shared and gotten positive feedback yourself, so we could see that it pays dividends. Okay. On your proposed action, um, why did my girlfriend break up with me? That, I wouldn't <laughs> yeah. recommend you put that on anywhere. Um, I think that's that's much too personal, and employers and everybody else reads this. So I think you have to be careful. Yeah, you have to be careful because employers read Twitter and Facebook and all these other social media sites now and check people out that way. Sadly enough, there's no privacy anymore. So, uh, you know. So if you show yourself naked and drunk on Facebook, don't be surprised if you don't get a job. Um, on the uh, second one, um, I like the, uh, the impulse of sharing information about a marathon with a friend. That was good. And you'll be more interesting if you share information with people. So it was interesting that you have this basic idea of, of giving and sharing, you know, not withholding information. Not, it's, it's much, very much the, the ethos of a teacher or a professor that wants to share knowledge, not hold it back or have it private, you know. Um, 
Your summary and conclusion and tieback were fine. Um, on the um, tieback, I especially want to compliment you on thanks to uh, Lorena and to the Chicago and so forth. And, and uh, that was very creative. Your canise. Okay, don't try not to uh, just. You're, you're going like this. It just stands still. Oh, okay. Don't, don't, don't uh, sway. Be confident and relaxed. Don't be afraid of forgetting part of my speech. Try my best to be fluent. How'd it go? Uh, uh, although I really re um, forgot my significant, but uh -huh. it's okay. That's yeah, okay. Yeah. You did your best. I remember yeah. during my speech, but I'm just the following. Yeah. Uh, some people will um, will circle back and say, oh, and by the way, I think this is really significant to all of you, even though they're in the middle of giving a reason just so they want to put it in. But uh, you knew you forgot it, so that was fine. Okay, nice job, Fed. Very good. Okay, next. Oh. oh, I'm so sorry. Almost kicked over the apple cart. Uh huh. The apple cart. Oh. It's a metaphor. <laughs> uh, 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 first, I'm so sorry for being late today. I had another uh -huh. final uh, until two o'clock. And second, I'm so sorry about that's maybe not the Chicago format because on the website I didn't find it. You couldn't find the Chicago format. Yeah, when I clicked the site, and it's not the Chicago format. Must be too obscure. Okay, well, we'll we'll live without it. It's kind of the Chicago format. Yeah. Thank you. Happy you. Okay. Okay. Say your name. Feel the love. Start your speech. Hi, everybody. I'm Anya. Hi, Hi Anya. The part of day in computer science department at last ends. After finishing the last exam in our final week, a friend said in his blog, actually he hadn't had a good sleep for seven days. Today I want to persuade you to keep early hours and I will give you two reasons and some actions and the benefits that will follow if you propose adopt my proposal. As the pressure on study and work increases day by day, people tend to sleep later and later. However, the strategy is not only useless, but also harmful. The first reason that uh, I want you to keep early hours is that it makes you fit and energetic. I want to support it with some uh, results of scientific service. First, lack of sleep results in the cardinal problems and second, sleep deprivation are also related to the neural damage and blood brain barrier function impair. If you don't have a good sleep for a long time, your immunity ability will also be weakened by 60%. I feel pitiful because uh, I have heard someone killed by sudden death because of lack of sleep. It does kill people, and that's not an alarming rumor. The second reason that I want you to keep early hours is that staying up late never means high efficiency. Uh, the support for this is my own experience. It was the last day in 2016 because one of my projects will be due next week, so I decided to study until 2 o'clock in a cafe near our campus. However, after 11, I found it was hard for me to con concentrate on my program and it was all of bugs. Uh, uh, worse, the night was freezing with the uh, north wind whistling, and I felt like my neck couldn't hold my head, as if my head was uh, 100 kilograms in weight. <laughs> Next day, Saturday, I caught a high fever and had to stay in bed for another two days. The only thing I could do, ironically, was sending an email to my professor, professor asking for another two days delay on the project. So uh, I will propose three action, uh, con concrete actions to, that you might take. The first action is to set an alarm clock when it is time to go to bed because you may forget it 
forget it because you are engaged in something. The second, uh, the second action is to make detailed plan to schedule a time. My method is use my scrapbook to list all the things I need to do. And the third action is to encourage the people around you, your friends, especially your roommate, to keep early hours with you. After performing that, you will find that your memory performance becomes better as well as your GPA. The energy in daytime not only gives you healthy body to do exercise, but also gives you positive attitudes to overcome the difficulties. And I show you, you will not only be a charming person, but you are more lovely. In summary, I have shown you a two reasons and uh, present some actions and benefits you will get if you follow my course of actions. So uh, there should be no doubt in this room that you really need to get up early and sleep early. If you really care for your academic performance, your appearance, you, and your mental and physical health. Now let's turn back to my final week. The epilogue of my final week is not a carnival, but a deathly silence, with everyone being tired and exhausted except me. I had a good sleep that night when others were struggling to be awake to work on their textbooks until 4 or 5 o'clock. But at last I got 4.8 in 5, and not perfect, but enough, especially considering the price is your health. Thank you. Thank you. What did you like about Anya's speech? 4.30? Hi, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Um, I really liked your speech, and I liked the term you um, keep in early hours. It was something different to hear. And your intro and tie back, like your, they were really um, like grasping and funny, and you were able to keep our attention the whole time because of your tone and your stories that you used. Okay. Thank you. Improvement. Hi, I'm Jessica. Hi, Hi Jessica. Jessica. Um, during your, I like your speech also, um, but during your first reason, I'm not exactly sure. When you were using your statistics, when you were using statistics, I don't know if you stated where the statistics were coming from. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that's one thing to like look for, so then we know where it's coming from and it can be more credible. Okay, thank you. Right. That was a good speech, and yeah, we heard a similar one while you were away taking a uh -huh. math exam. Yeah. But it was completely different and unique in a good way. Um, but one of the points I've been making over and over again is when you're arguing in the oral realm, people can't read your footnotes. You have to speak them aloud and say, in 2014, according to a study in the very famous Sleep Journal, volume 37, these seven researchers concluded that, see, and that's what she's talking about, so you don't want to just say, oh, scientific, um, yeah, that, that doesn't cut it at a real university, okay? So uh, you have to be more specific in the oral medium when you're making your case. Your um, intro was a good example of somebody that wasn't following your wisdom, shall we say. Mm -hmm. And uh, you chose to uh, talk about, and I... There was a little trouble with your wording of uh, of going to sleep at an early hour, and I think you meant getting up at an early hour too, or getting seven and a half hours sleep and then getting up early and not wasting the day away. I'm not, although I'm not, I don't want to put words in your mouth. On your um, significant statement, you needed to sell it a little bit more to the audience and say, if you get sleep deprived, it's going to be harmful to you guys, right? Sell it to them. 
We already talked about your first reason not being specific enough with the citation of where it came from. Uh, your second reason where I loved your example of your code full of bugs and I love your head weighed a hundred kilograms, that was very cute, and you had to call the professor and ask for a two-day delay. Uh, that was, uh, you know, that was a very a good and compelling evidence of what happens when you're uh, working, sleep deprived and cramming and so forth. So that was compelling. Uh, setting an alarm clock or an Apple phone to remind you this is bedtime is fine. Um, you said you use a scrapbook, I think we call it a planner or a scheduler. We, we have a different meaning of scrapbook here. It's where we keep pictures and things here in America. But, yeah, okay, I th I, we all knew what you meant, right? Yeah, okay. And uh, I don't know about encouraging roommates to have a regular type because some people have roommates from hell that want to stay up all night and will, don't have many manners and will keep you up with loud noises and so forth. It's kind of sad. Um, your benefits were good, though, and you just needed to say the word benefit more and just say, and there will be benefits to you. I mean, stress that word. Um, your canines. Be confident, have good eye contact, and be in time. How did it go? Um, maybe the time is a little uh, off, yeah. but how, how about confident and eye contact? Confident, maybe, I think it's okay. And, uh -huh. and, uh, eye contact, um, not as good as I expect. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, a little nervous. Okay. Well, work on three to five seconds, really connecting with people and then going on to somebody else and really moving all around the room, okay? Thank you very much. And yeah. Okay, what's our time looking like? Oh, how many are left? One, two, three, four, five, six! Well, can you wait? Can you want to wait and do them? Yes, yes, yes. You don't. That's why I said volunteer if you have to leave. No, we're out of time, big guy. Good, clever though. Okay, good. Yeah, all right. Um, oh, you have to go to the airport. Yeah. You have to go to the airport. No. You just have to go get a beer. <laughs> I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't drink alcohol. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not drinking. What? Okay, whatever. Um, okay, uh, we're going to uh, we're going to go to uh, um, uh, raise your hands again. Uh, we're going to go to the um, over to the Calm Studies Lab which is in the second floor of this, of Rolf, to finish these, okay? So we'll go there, and for you, you'll just turn it in, because you managed to slip through the crack. So do you all know where you're going? You don't have enough time. You have a doctor, you should have volunteered too. You know, now everyone, no one has enough time. Yeah. No one else has, you have time. Yeah. Okay, one yeah. last time. Okay. Can I give my gifts? Oh, she has gifts. She has oh, gifts wait, for wait, her fellow wait, classmates. Wait, wait, wait. Don't leave without getting your gifts. Uh, I have some gifts, uh, bookmarks from China. Bookmarks from China, yeah. 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 See? <laughs> <laughs> Part of the plagiarism or revolution. Yeah, yeah. yeah. oh yeah. There you go. Yeah, okay. So. Thank you, baby. I'm not sure is it enough. Thank you so much. Thanks, babe. There you go. That's sweet. Very nice. Very sweet. 
Okay, very nice. So you're going with me. You're going with me. You're not. You have places to go, people to meet. Okay, good. Let me uh, mark your uh, page. Here, stand here in the side. I remember this when I'm looking at you. Hi. Say your name. Uh, my name is Ashley. And <laughs> Ashley, did, Ashley didn't deliver her speech. I didn't, but I'm turning in my speech. And we'll say your name. Me? Oh, uh, let me think of it. What? Let me think of I mean, I, I'm not deciding. Okay, Lee didn't deliver his. Say your name. Jessica. Jessica didn't deliver her speech. Yeah. Okay, good. You haven't done your speech? I know, right. Have a good life, don't change. Yeah, about the point. Thank you very much. Nice to see you. All right, so, uh, wait a minute. So you're handing, you staple your stuff. And let me mark the ones, it won't staple? Two major of a treaty. Two major of a treaty, huh? Here, I'll do it. Do it from both sides. Okay, uh, let's do this quick so we can get over there. Okay. Uh, 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 this is persuasive. It stays out. Okay, can you can you uh, carry this? Okay, I guess we'll have to start a third one. Okay, so let me turn this.